Hey y'all, so that's Liz. This is Max, and this Waffles. is Waffles. So Max and I are both yoga instructors and dietitians, and today we'll be talking about essential oils for your yoga routine. So first, what is yoga and why do we use it? Yoga literally means union. Um, oftentimes now it's used as a connection between the breath and movement in a physical practice. Nowadays we see yoga as just the physical practice, right? You go into a studio, you sweat, and then, you know, you do a workout. But that's only one aspect of yoga. There's eight aspects of yoga. Uh, usually as they're called, eight limbs of yoga. Mm -hmm. And um, generally, or through time, it's been used to actually quiet the mind. So we make the body fit to sit. So in the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali describes yoga as the progressive quieting of the fluctuations of the mind. And so just turning inwards and really connecting your mind, body, spirit and going deeper within. Yeah, so a lot of times we do yoga and we use our essential oils for it. And so we're going to share some of our favorite essential oils for our yoga practice. So the first oil that we really like to use for yoga is breathe. Breathe. So breathe is amazing for opening up the airways. We just take a drop in our palm. You can go first. Hmm. Deep inhale and exhale, let it all out. So this really opens up the airways and in yoga we connect our breath to our movement. So one breath, one movement, and breathe really helps with just opening up our airways. Especially sometimes, as I said, yoga is making the body fit to sit. We're promoting ease, and sometimes what helps, right, because things get caught up, you're moving through life so quickly, not you, everyone is moving through life sometimes, it seems, so quickly and we forget to breathe. We forget that each emotional state has a breath pattern that is associated with it. But breathe, if you've never experienced breathe before, you definitely should try, but breathe really, it brings your awareness to the breath. And so it's a really gentle and easy reminder um, to, to kind of slow down in a sense if you need it or mostly just maintain that deep, long breath. Yeah, inviting people to really let go. So breathing out and then to receive. So breathing in, letting go, and then receiving. As Liz said, our favorite technique is just putting a drop in the hands, breathing it in. I also, and I think Liz as well, rubbing it on the chest, or you can mm -hmm. just take it, you can even rub it on the back of your neck if you want um, before a practice. And then as you start sweating in the practice, it, it reactivates uh, the oil and you, you feel it again and you have, again, that second reminder mm -hmm. to breathe. Mm -hmm. And so our second favorite, or not second favorite, but one of our other favorite It's like choosing oils. a favorite kid. <laughs> we only have one kid. I mean, Waffles, our dog. He's a dog. He sees me <laughs> looking over there because he's, he's eating a carrot on the stairs. So. But our, the second oil we'll talk about is sandalwood. So specifically, I have Indian sandalwood right here. We also like using Hawaiian sandalwood. I love Hawaiian sandalwood, it's my favorite. And so we have a dropper here. It's easier to get out. And sandalwood is amazing if you're feeling, you know, all over the place. It's great for grounding, for centering. Um, I like to just rub it again in my hands. Take a deep breath in. Mm, wow. Oh my God. Yeah, and especially Hawaiian sandalwood, we feel for the lower chakras if you subscribe to that belief philosophy and Hawaiian for the upper. And so that while they're both very grounding, you know, Hawaiian brings that extra added benefit. And I like using, or Indian adds the extra added benefit of being grounding and Hawaiian really helps me feel more in meditation. Mm -hmm. So try those both out. And you know, I like Indian sandalwood better. Max likes Hawaiian sandalwood better. <laughs> Um, so you can let us know which one your favorite is. Yeah, and the final oil that uh, we'll be talking about... Black spruce. Black spruce. This is actually one of my all-time favorite oils. Mm -hmm. Amazing for energetic blockages. So again, 
one drop. You can also diffuse any of these during your practice as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, the combination of all three of those, I don't know if I ever put them all together at once. <laughs> Usually I, um, Liz likes to inhale them all directly from her hand. What I like to do specifically, breathe I'll do from my hands, Hawaiian sandalwood I'll sometimes do from my hands, but mostly I actually put it on my wrists and Hawaii, um, black spruce I almost exclusively put on my wrists and especially if I'm going through something pretty heavy and I, I want to get the energy moving, I'll start behind my ear, I'll put it behind my ear the front of my neck to my other ear and then I'll put it in my armpits and on my pulse points on my wrists. And so black spruce, again, creates a calming environment. We also like to use it, again, in our yoga practice, diffusing it, breathing it in. I just like to rub it in my hands and breathe it in like that. What a lot of people find when they first enter into a yoga practice and as the body becomes more fit, as the mind becomes more quiet, things come up. Things that may not have been at the surface start to emerge. And so if you feel like either A, you wanna kind of help it pass, or B, like it's almost stuck, right? Like stuck in your throat, you don't know what it is. I find that the black spruce really helps. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're experiencing, you can use it in your yoga practice, either in the beginning, or even you know diffusing it throughout your yoga practice and in meditation at the very end. Yeah, um, I have to say it was also it was great to experience all three of those <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. The final thing we wanted to cover today was how to start doing yoga if you're a beginner. Mm -hmm. We have two Instagram pages that we really love. They provide free tutorials all day, every day. Mm -hmm. How to practice yoga is the name of the first one, and inflexible yogis. That's how to practice yoga and inflexible yogis. They're both on Instagram, and there's an at in very beginning. At inflexible, <laughs> I-N, inflexible yogis at how to practice yoga. Mm -hmm. And then we both have our own personal pages where we also post free tutorials and we have other awesome offerings. Um, Liz's is at Ms. Liz, M-I-Z dot L-I-Z. Mm -hmm. And mine... Healing motions. <laughs> so healing... healing. Motions, not like emotions, movement. but yeah. motions. Yeah. And so these are our these are our favorite, you know, these are our favorite places for, for beginners to start because it's it's free. It's it's very accessible. You can scroll through and see what you want and what suits you on this day. You know, I have some breathing techniques on mine. Mm -hmm. Liz has some more bendy yoga y like mm -hmm. like traditional what we think of as yoga. Or um, even, you know, tutorials for your emotions, like yoga for stress, yoga for fill in the blanks. It's true. Yeah. Um, so as long as you have a yoga mat, uh, your computer or laptop or phone in a positive attitude. Mm, you can start anywhere. You can start your practice. And actually you don't even really need a yoga mat that much. You can just, yeah. If you have carpet. I, yeah. I, I do it on the carpet sometimes. You're on the wood floor. Like as long as your knees don't bother you. Yeah. So we'll see you guys later. Thank you all for tuning in and let's do some yoga. We hope you found this beneficial. Talk to you soon.